you know, you guys go up 2-0, all of a sudden you let up two unanswered goals and end up getting the uh, the game winner with 13 seconds left in double overtime. Yeah, well, what a college game, up and down, up and down. Um, I can't say enough, uh, I criticized our resilience against UIC and about how... Uh, um, not immature, but we weren't weathered to, w to uh, win a game like that. And then today, after having all the play, the majority of the play, playing, I thought, very, very well, moving the ball, basically everything is planned except putting the, putting the ball in the back of the net uh, and leaving a small window of opportunity open. And then, lo and behold, I mean, uh, you can see by the substitutions, Western just kept bringing people on, people on, fresh people on, fresh people on. Great strategy by the coach. And they were just running and running and running. They were going north and south. We were trying to go north, south, east, west. And then we gave a penalty away. And that kind of gave them even more spark. And then uh, it was a, lot, a long time since teams that I've coached gave another penalty away. And so then we're at 2-2. Two, two. What was really, really encouraging for me is when you get adversity like that, sometimes uh, inexperience causes the people that make those mistakes to uh, uh, shrivel up and, uh, and not step forward. But I thought that we call them the, the big three, the goalkeeper, the two central defenders, and then we call the, the defensive midfield player the strong four. I thought at that point where we, where we may have in the past, you know, come back on our heels and, and forgot the things that we've been working on, I thought the big three and the strong four really stepped up. And I think when other guys were very, very tired and we didn't use that many people, we were a bit thin on the bench, you know, uh, those guys played really well and I thought it was their persistence. And if we were to lose that game, we were going to lose trying to play the way that we are supposed to play, which was very encouraging. We didn't lose our identity. I mean, we didn't play very well in parts of the game, but I would say if I were to take that 80%, 80 percent of that game, I thought we played very well. 10 percent, we didn't play that well, and then the other 10 percent, we didn't do well at all. Um, and sometimes that can bite you, but today, the eagle flew. Can you talk a little bit about the physicality of this game? Yeah. 21 fouls, 16 fouls both ways. Yeah. A lot of bone crunching hits throughout the game. Was that something you were expecting? And yeah. how do you think you guys reacted? Yeah, we knew we, we knew they were a very physical North South team. You know, we saw the, the film on them, and we're not. I mean, we're not built like that. You know, we've got guys of all shapes, all sizes. We're not, you know. Um, but we're not going to also. We can't afford to take a back seat. You know, and we've got some guys that can also, you know, compete. Uh, that's not our plan. But we had to stick up for ourselves, and um, you know it's a difficult game when, when a team is playing like that, and they you know, and a, there is a physicality to their game plan. It's a difficult game for referees to handle because they don't know what's intentional, what's accidental, what's just in the run of the play. And, and I don't really think anything was either really uh, malicious or brutal, but it was very, it was very physical, and that's the nature of that team. You know, they're big, they're powerful, and they keep going north south. That is common in a lot of college teams. There are only a few teams that, you know, try to play north, south, east, west. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, that was just the nature of it. And we, you've got to deal with that. If you don't deal with that, you don't win games. Can you talk a little about C and his goal? <laughs> well, as you can see, C is a really interesting character. He's a, he's a, he's a phenomenal athlete. He's a, uh, he just loves to be out there. And uh, I think he was opportunistic. He took the goal very well put it in the back of the net and obviously was very pleased to get his first collegiate, collegiate goal. I think uh, I should reprimand him because he probably spent more energy in the celebration than he did in the actual, uh, uh, the actual operation to put the ball in the back of the net. But he's for the now as well as for the future, you know, so he's, a, he's another one of several guys over the last two or three years that we've brought in that are obviously of a, of a real good quality. When, uh Western Michigan went on that run there towards the end. Do you think that was more of your offense kind of taking, I don't know, for lack of a better word, like lack of days ago, or was it more defensive lapses? I think it was. A, I think it was a. It was a fatigue, heat factor. I think we lost our way. I believe in any every soft game. There's a there's a bio rhythm. You know, when you're up, you got to score. When you go down, you got to prevent. You got you have to prevent people from scoring. And, and unfortunately, we didn't do that. And and we couldn't get it up. We we were with them. 
small portions of the game where we couldn't get uh, our foothold. And because they're so direct and they're running forward, we needed some calm, we needed some um, smarts. There was one particular uh, instance where they broke and we could have dropped, but we stepped and caught them offside. And at that point, I thought, ah, now we're thinking. Now we've got back to thinking rather than stinking. You, know? yeah. you mentioned the physicality of the game tonight and that that's not necessarily your team style of play, but obviously on a couple instances, a foul in the box and it results in penalty kicks that end up in goals. Can you walk us through those uh, couple plays and yeah. what, what went wrong? I, I, I think that... Axel in the centre floor were battling. I mean, they were battling in there. There was a little pushing and shoving. I think the last contact was made by Axel, and the guy went down. And quite rightly, if that's what the referee saw, he saw the penalty. He gave it. I've got no, you know, you know. Uh, if you see the whole exchange, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But it was a penalty. I mean, he gave. He saw that. So that was a little naivety. There's a time where, you, you know, you do give it back to the, and there's a time you don't. I think the ball was way over his head. So he, none, you know, there's probably no need to have done that. But. That's neither here or there. It's easy for us to, to. It's easy for me to say that now. It was a split decision. The the second penalty was definitely a penalty. The guy had split the two. Eric Kane slid in. He initially was going to try to get the ball, and he was just a moment late, and he he clipped him. He didn't clip him enough maliciously. He just he was trying to flick the ball away, and he clipped it. And the guy rode the tackle really well and sold the foul, and it was definitely a penalty. You know, I've got no problem. I mean, the the, the second one was definitely the first one. That's how the referee saw it, and good on him. You know, I mean. It's the way soccer goes. You've got to take care of those things. And I, and I think it was a small lapse, but that's college sports. I mean, it's definitely college soccer anyway. It's, if, you, if you're not built to go up and down, up and down, you have to get a foothold in the game. And this is in the latter part, even in the overtime, I thought there were a few breakaways and they did have a great opportunity. But we managed to get enough foothold in the game to create. And one of the things we've been working on, and we've been watching games from the past, all kinds of games of teams coming back with three minutes, two minutes, one minute left. And in UIC, we had two saved off the line in the last three minutes. So I knew that at any time, if we could create familiar opportunities and familiar chances. And I told them we had 16 corners the last game and couldn't score a goal. We, we have a couple of corners and we look really dangerous. And this was the second phase of a corner. It was almost like a corner. And Huftel and Rose rose like a salmon out of the sea and bore many goals. It was fantastic. You guys thought you played really well last year in Maycomb going up against Western Illinois. Now you get them again on Sunday. You kind of know what to expect, physical team, <laughs> very similar to tonight. What are you looking forward to out of the weather next? Well, I'm going to take a deep breath, and I'll have a large glass of Gatorade, and I'll sit up there, and I'll see if they are going to be the same. I'm not going to take anything for granted. There are tendencies. I know the coach The coach doesn't change, but the personnel may change, and we'll, um, we'll prepare tomorrow or tonight. There's ice baths for the lads, and they'll, they'll have to regenerate tomorrow hydrate and we'll um, we'll see where we are we'll see if we've picked up any injuries and we'll see what we can do um, uh, uh, to put a perfect game plan together but you know college soccer is not perfect you know college soccer would be much much better if we had three 30 year olds playing or 29 year olds 28 year olds that could calm things down our lads have to mature fast you know and today didn't have to be that close but it was and I, I like the college game um, but like I say it this 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 should serve as a maturing uh, a maturing point